In this video, I will show you a better alternative for the ls list command on Linux. ls is a basic command in every Linux or Unix operating system, and it gives you a list of files and folders inside a directory. It's also one of the most used commands overall, together with the cd change directory command. So everyone who uses Linux or Unix knows about it, or should know about it. And although it does perfectly what it should do, sometimes the results are maybe not displayed as you would prefer. Or, as simple as it is, maybe it's missing a feature or two that would make it even more useful. Now before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there at the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. First I will talk about the ls command and explain why I think it's good and also why it sometimes sucks. So basically the ls command is used to list files and folders inside a directory. In this case right here it's the working directory, which is my home directory. Here you can see all the files and all the folders displayed as a list, which is done using the dash al option. And without it, if I do just ls, in this case you get just a list of folders. This is the only content that is not hidden, because everything that has a dot at the beginning of the name is actually hidden. To show the hidden entries, add dash a and now you have everything as a grid. This is great if you just want a compact view what's inside the folder. If you want a bit more information, then do dash a l. Now you get the files as a list, as we saw previously, and you also get additional informations like permissions, owners, groups, file sizes, and last modification date. Those two variants work perfectly if you know what you're looking for. For example, when you know a .bash something file is in here, so you can take a look what it's actually called, or you can check the file size. But if you don't know what you're looking for, or if the file is inside a subdirectory, or if you just want to explore the folders, then ls is not so great. Because then you would need to ls inside every subdirectory just to find the file that you're looking for, which is a lot of typing and also frustrating. And yes, there is also the R option, which will also list the files and folders inside subdirectories, but this one just displays everything as a list, and it goes into every subdirectory. You can't say give me just the first two levels of subdirectories. So you get everything, which is very hard to read, not really structured, and overall not really useful. Now, by the way, the distro that I'm using here is called MX Linux, and this one is actually running from a USB drive. MX Linux is ranked number one on DistroWatch, and in the previous video, I showed you how you can install it on a USB drive. So, if you want to run MX Linux on a USB drive yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. The best ls command alternative, in my opinion, is called tree. To install tree on a Debian or Ubuntu system, just write sudo apt install tree. And that's it, 52 kilobytes. Let's clear the terminal. The tree command can basically do everything that ls can do. So if I just execute tree inside my home directory, similar like ls, I get a list of files and directories. Again, hidden files and folders are not listed by default. If I want to list them, then I need to add dash "-a", option. By default, tree will also list all the files and folders inside subdirectories, similar like the dash "-r", option that we saw with ls. So if I execute this one, now as you can see, we got everything inside every subfolder, and it's structured as a tree which in my opinion makes much more sense than the dash r option with ls, but it's definitely too much. So in addition, you can specify the level with l, and then let's say I want just the first level, so 1, and now I get all the files and folders inside my working directory. If I want, I can also add the second level. If you want four levels, 
write for, and so on. If you want to display additional information, like ls does, then we need to add additional options. For instance, adding all of those options, if I execute, we basically get the same information, like permissions, owner, group, file size, and last modification date. And all of this nicely visualized as a tree. And this time you can also add additional levels. For instance, two. Now you get all the files and folders inside subdirectories. So this is perfect if you just want to explore what's inside the folders. And for the use case, if you're searching for a certain file and you don't really know where the file is, then there is also the dash P option where you can specify a search pattern. Let's say I'm searching for a .sh file and I also want to remove all the folders without the files and it found one on the second level, as you can see, because we specified to search only the first two levels. To search in every level, just remove the level and the L option. And now it has found four script files, also very nicely visualized as a tree. Now let's say I also want to search for config files, then just add pipe.conf, execute, now it also added the config files. Similar, you can also ignore certain files using dash i. Let's say I want to ignore all the files that have an underline inside their name or a dash. And let's say I want to list only three levels. Let's try it out, execute. And here it is, no dashes and no underlines. So as you can see, you can also use tree as a search command. And also, as you can see, I used kdiskmark, the disk benchmarking tool. In a previous video, I benchmarked two types of RAM disk on Linux, and man, they're fast. So if you want to create and use a RAM disk on Linux, or just want to see the benchmarking, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now there is an obvious downside when it comes to the tree command. It's long and it has many options that you can't really remember, but thankfully aliases exist. So let's check if we have some alias. As you can see, we already have some, like for instance, L is ls-cf or la is ls-a or the famous ll is actually ls-lh. And even ls itself has an alias for ls with colors. So let's define a few also for the tree. And therefore, we need to edit the .bashrc file inside the home directory. Now inside the .bashrc file, we should find the aliases. To find them, write slash and the search term alias and press enter. Here is the first result. Now press n to find the rest. This is the ls with colors. Those are commented out, and here is the rest. Now let's add another one. Press escape and press I. Now you can edit the file. Let's create a new line and write alias. Let's call this one tree, and it should be equal to tree dash and then all the other options. So I don't need to specify those all the time. Then let's add another one. I will call it F tree, which will do the search. Here, I only need to define tree because tree is also defined up here, so it will add all those options. And then what's missing is the option to not show empty directories and also dash p. So afterwards, I can then define the search pattern. Now, I will also change one, the ll alias. I will change this to tree dash l1. So this one should give me the first level of the tree. Now, let's save that, press escape, then a colon, wq enter the file is saved it should work after you open a new bash shell so let's do that bash and let's try tree dash l2 and it works it gave me the first two levels perfect let's try f3 and i will use the same pattern script files and config files enter works as well Let's try only script files inside the first two levels. Works as well. Now let's try LL. Perfect. And this should be basically the same 
as dash ALH. Looks basically the same, but honestly, I prefer the tree command. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. As I mentioned, the ls command and also the tree command you can basically find on any Unix system. Now, although Linux isn't pure Unix, in a previous video I explained why Linux is one of the best open source operating systems that we have. So if you want to know why Linux is better than, for instance, FreeBSD, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video then like and subscribe and if you really like the video down there is super thanks so you can buy me a coffee for instance so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.